smart green intelligent smart green intelligent when it comes to electric two wheelers these seem to be the only buzzwords being spoken about in india but what about excitement well it's time to meet ultraviolet's f77 f77 what do you write an f77 sounds so freaking cool and that's because the founders of ultraviolet are huge fans of things that go fast up there and this actually the name is because this is the seventh generation of the motorcycle that they've been developing it may only be the first one that we've seen and the second seven is because this runs at about 70 amperes Inspired from the F22, does the F77 fly? Well, Ultraviolet claims a 0 to 100 time of 7.5 seconds, 0 to 16, 2.9, which puts it in the ballpark of something like TVS's Apache RR310. So, yes, it does feel impressively fast when you start off, but post 100 kilometers an hour, the performance kind of tapers down. This is also dependent on the state of charge of the batteries, so the performance can vary. But right now what it felt like was a fairly punchy motorcycle, but not something that's out and out exciting. The claimed top speed is 145, and we managed to hit 124, and it took a little bit of time to get there. Ah, before I forget, exhaust note. Oh, yeah, welcome to the future, my friends. Silent. Not exactly. The future might sound whiny. Get used to it. <laughs> But it's an interesting thing, when you're out on the track, the world's whizzing past, you open the gas, it gets a little bit faster, you have to relearn because you can't depend on just listening to the sound of the engine to figure out how fast you're going or how much you're pushing. Some amount of recalibration is required. Funnily enough, one area where you do not need recalibration is riding the motorcycle. You'd think not having a clutch, not having gears and going out on a racetrack could be, well, a little uncomfortable at first. But surprisingly, you go out and it just feels so natural. And that's credit delivered here to the system itself because the calibration of the throttle, it isn't jerky. The power of the way is delivered, the torque rather, is smooth so you can get as much as you want when you want it. And even when you're in a corner leaned over, you twist it open and it just feels very nice, predictable. Coming into the ride, I had only seen the ultraviolet spec sheet and on the basis of that, my expectations were set fairly high. And I'd have to say right now, the F77 hasn't really delivered on the performance front in terms of the acceleration and the top speed, the way it gets there. Because right now, it would still get, I think, a little overshadowed by its petrol-powered rivals. For now, the top in performance feels more in tune with a 200 or a 250, not a 300. But in terms of grabbing attention, the F77 is in a class of its own. Having seen the F77 in pictures, you might think that it doesn't look particularly good. But to be honest, when you see it in the flesh, it is a good looking motorcycle. The covers for its upside down forks. The squashed in headlamp with the chunky LED design. The handsome alloy wheels and the cast alloy swing arm make it look super cool and very purposeful. If the F77 seems a bit RC-esque, we won't blame you because it seems the same way to us and actually there is a connection underneath the way it looks as well because in terms of the geometry for the steering, the wheelbase is actually shared with the RC and it even has a trellis frame underneath over here but the trellis frame has been modified. Having this setup is actually a very promising thing because the RC has been a sharp handler. 
The front portion of the frame is longer to make space for the battery pack and the motor, so the swing arm has been shortened. But suspension components are shared with the KTM, so there are strong genetics here. That means on the track, immediately we could have fun with the F77. It really felt really quick to steer, more than we expected it to be. And if you think about the weight, well, this is 10 kilograms lighter than something like a RR310. For instance, each wheel is said to be lighter by one kilogram than the KTM. And to steer, it is very sharp. So show it a set of corners and it just hustles. There may be a little bit of getting used to in terms of the way it steers if you're really going fast. A little bit of an extra nudge is required. This is when transitioning double fast from one side to the other. The rear biased weight distribution and a lower center of gravity might be responsible for this trait. But other than that, well, we think this is a package that ends up feeling very promising. Well, on the practicality front, to charge it up to 80% would take about 3 hours and the charging port is conveniently located right on top over here. But if you don't have access to a charging port, you could access something else. And this is the F77's Batman trick. Check out where the batteries are stored and how they come out. This is so cool. You could ride the F77 with just one battery, but that would give you 50 to 60 kilometers of range and 11 PS of power only. And this increases with each pack that you added. So you can just pull one out, carry it up home, charge it there and bring it back in and slot it in. And when you're done, just two taps. That's something that will make you smile every time. The 150 kilometers of claimed range is hard to comment on as the battery packs on our motorcycles were swapped frequently. This was to provide peak performance. And we can't comment on the Ultraviolet app which promises to let you customize the motorcycle, see your bike's stats and the right data. 800 mm seat height, very practical. But how's the seat comfort? Well, I actually can't tell you that because this isn't production spec. And uh, the brakes, nice and strong. But how do the ABS work? I can't tell you that or about the super motor mode because that wasn't configured, as was the reverse gear. That wasn't activated here either. These final switches aren't in place either. These are just units from an Apache for now. And well, in terms of performance, how was the insane mode? Well, we didn't try it, we just rode it in the sport mode. These are all the things that are yet to be fine-tuned and put in on the F77. And when they do, we'll have a better feel for what the bike is going to be like in its end form. Right now, what we see is a very promising motorcycle, one that has the potential to be a lot of fun and very engaging. But just now, it's not complete yet. So, if you were looking for an exciting motorcycle that's also electric, we're going to have to wait till October 2020 to give a verdict on the ultraviolet F77. So, in this digital age, exciting motorcycles are being made fast and sharp in the virtual world. But this excitement is yet to translate in the real world.